Hi, I'm Jesse with Mastercam. In this video, we're going to talk about how tolerances affect program length, how to easily visualize these differences in Mastercam, and how modern controls like the Haas Next Generation Control can handle large programs with little to no increase in cycle time. We talk to customers all the time who are concerned about G-code length and the effect it'll have on cycle time. It's true, complex roughing programs and surfacing programs can produce a lot of code. Older CNCs just didn't have the memory capacity to handle these larger NC files, so programmers were forced to work around this limitation. Even today, the habit of working to produce shorter programs is something that many programmers adhere to. The problem with this is that it makes more work for the programmer, can negatively affect the quality of the part, and with something like the Haas Next Generation Control, it's just not needed. For this demonstration, we're going to be looking at a 3D surfacing toolpath. We'll be focusing on only cutting this colored face. This part file already has a raster toolpath programmed, which is a straightforward operation. The only unique thing that we're doing here is leveraging the 5-axis capabilities of the UMC750 to tilt the tool so we're not cutting with the tip. If you're new to 5-axis machining, the reason for tilting the tool is that the tip of the cutter is essentially running at 0 RPM, regardless of what the spindle speed we set. Cutting with the tip can negatively affect the surface finish, so it's a good idea to tilt the tool whenever possible. Cutting with the portion of the ball that's traveling closer to the set spindle speed means you're cutting closer to the specified chip load. If we open the toolpath parameters and go to the tool page, we'll see that we have a feed rate of 400 inches per minute. Running a 3D toolpath at that high of a feed rate should indicate if a machine is having issues handling the code. Navigating to the arc filter tolerance page, we can see that the cut tolerance is set to the default value of 1,000th. When users want to limit program size, they will typically loosen the total tolerance and enable arc filtering. With that change made, the toolpath doesn't really look any different. Without posting out the code, it's difficult to understand exactly what has changed. Let's make a copy of this toolpath by using the right-click options and open the parameters for the copied toolpath. On the arc filter tolerance page, let's disable the arc filter and really tighten up the tolerances. This is going to produce a toolpath with far more G-code. People often think that very tight tolerances like this are only for things like high-end mold machines that cost millions of dollars. The truth is, the next generation control on the UMC 750 SS is more than capable of handling this code stream. So we have our two toolpaths created, and one of them is producing a lot more code than the other. At the moment, they look visually identical, but there is an easy way for us to see exactly how different they are. On the View tab, there's a function called Advanced Display. When enabled, Mastercam will visually indicate feed moves, lead-ins and outs, and rapid moves by color coding them. I'm going to enable endpoint display as well. I can enter the display options and customize the color and size of the different parts of the toolpath. In the graphics window, every endpoint at the beginning or end of a G1, G2, or G3 move is shown as a red dot. This is great visual feedback on how much G-code you will end up with and is very helpful when comparing different settings such as arc filter and cut tolerance. Switching between the two operations, it's clear the second one is going to produce more code. Let's find out exactly how much more by posting them out. We'll post out the first operation and call it loose tolerance. Op1 produced a little over 3,000 lines of code. That's a reasonably short program for a complex 3D surface. Now let's find out exactly how much more code the second operation is going to produce. We'll call this operation Tight Tolerance. 
If we scroll down to the bottom, and it is taking quite a bit longer, we will see that there are over 57,000 lines of code. That's almost 20 times the amount of code. With an older control that's low on memory and processing power, I would absolutely cringe at this program length. However, modern controls like the Haas Next Generation Control will fly through this code with no problem. Remember, this first operation is the shorter program using the looser tolerance and arc filtering. The motion control is good and the machine moves effortlessly through the toolpath. If we take a look in the control, we'll see that the toolpath took 4 minutes and 10 seconds. Now let's load and run the second operation. Remember, this program is almost 20 times longer than the first one. Despite the amount of code, the machine motion really doesn't look any different than the first operation where the tolerance was set loose. The total cycle time for the second operation is 4 minutes and 26 seconds. That's an increase of only 6% in cycle time. So by drastically reducing our tolerances, we've only gained 16 seconds in a program with a cycle time of over 4 minutes. Keep in mind, this example is a worst case scenario where the two tolerances are extreme. In a more real world situation, you would probably see hardly any or no difference at all in cycle time. Modern controls like the Haas Next Gen are more than capable of handling these larger code streams, and the tighter tolerance generally means a higher surface finish quality. So the next time you find yourself making changes on the Arc Filter Tolerance page, make sure to use Advanced Toolpath Display. This can help you make informed decisions about the G-code you're posting to your machine, whether it's new or old, 